Hello and you're welcome to the Backdoor Football Show. Uh, delighted to be joined by Johnny McGee and John McMahon discussing a domination performance by Dublin once again. But um, six in a row, Johnny, the ladies winning as well. You must be a happy man. Ah, oh, yeah, look, me, um, can't complain. You know, um, I suppose I was more <laughs> I was more interested in, in yesterday's game, the ladies' game, obviously, for obvious reasons, you know. Um, but look, yeah, it was it was great to see that our lads doing six, and uh, I suppose, and the girls doing four. You know, um, I thought you know, the both teams did very well, and it went in the I suppose the closing quarters where where games are always left to to be won. You know, um, and I have both second half performances was was very good by both teams. In fairness to them, you know, so uh, yeah, very happy, yeah, uh, happy for Lauren. So it's a nice send off for she fly well, she to fly out in the next couple next day. Uh, 10 days to Melbourne, so it's nice that she, she goes off with it with a win, you know. So, um, but an exciting time for her, you know. And uh, John, we talked about six in a row, it's 42 games unbeaten, um, for Dublin now. Yeah, all uh, superb athletes, superb athletes. I think, um, they're full credit for it, Paul. I think to go about their business in such a professional manner and they're just such humble lads. They're great lads to do so much kind of work for their in the local communities, obviously for charities and bits and pieces. And yeah, I look, I see Philly McMahon on off the ball AM there this morning, and he's just you know he's he's very good with the kids. I think they were doing like a broadcast from Temple Street and bits and pieces. So you know they're just they're just fantastic people off the pitch as well, which is more which probably you know serves serves them serves them good too. But look, it's an incredible feat, Paul and. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to be stopping anytime soon. And uh, the quickest ever goal in the championship, um, straight away, Johnny um, James McCarthy to catch it, but Dean Rock again finishing it. But a, a superb move to start the game straight away. Yeah, it was to show the intense, and I think they would have that would have been worked on um, because, like, as soon as they got us, like, and like, let's let like. James knew it was on one, one thing was on his mind, and if you watch when he gathers it, he looks up straight away, gives the pass, the kick pass, but where where the, the pass is given, you know that pocket of space or that run was already was or that run had been made was given, and he kept the run going, give it back, you know, and run straight through the middle. Like for me, it was naive defending because you don't vacate the middle, particularly when it's the throwing. You know, so for me, it was poor defending up on that part. You know, from from the centre back position, um, and look, come here, it was uh, it was a fantastic start. And look, when you have an overlap like that, there's no better team that's going to punish you than 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 the lads. You know, and Dean Rock, look, is on the end of it. But like, you know, the unselfishness of 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 McEntee, or of uh, James McCarthy, um, was unbelievable. And look, come here, for me, James McCarthy is pound for pound the best footballer in the country in the last ten years. Um, a definitely outfield player. Look, obviously there's no question with Klucko, but in terms of consistency levels, and the from from the 21 in 2011, he has been the the absolute uh, rock of this this the, this Dublin team in this era, and he epitomises as what John alluded today in terms of the caliber of young fella or young fella. He's like he's near 40 now, but I mean in terms of the caliber of player you want or fella you want to meet uh, away from the field. He's just so humble, and like even his interview afterwards was was amazing, you know. And you could see the emo the emotion in his in his interview after, which was you know was very heartwarming uh, from the sense of you know, other people kind of getting to see that kind of person side, you know. And, and he was you know what um, I'm probably going off cue a bit, but I just felt the interview with De- with Desi and Cluco came across very well. The bit of bit of banter down with, with Philly then and. On about the elf on the shelf where March, you know, I, I think it, and Desi going up and lifting up the cup, you know, I thought I was, you know, and Desi looked did a great achievement, like minor 21. And, and but like it just gives that kind of personal side to, to the group where maybe it hasn't been shown as much before, um, which I thought was good, you know. And um, Johnny, you mentioned James McCarthy there being pound for pound best footballer, but do you feel in the GA circles? We all know he's a good footballer, but do you feel he is somewhat underrated? Yeah, yeah, I see. The thing is, like, he, he goes about his job so well, um, and he doesn't get the plaudits because he just he goes out, does it so simply. Anybody he goes on, he more or less nearly nullifies. 
but it, it's you know a different stage in, in those all Ireland win- uh, finals. You know, a couple of years ago, he was against Mayo or Kerry where he took the game where the scruff for the neck, drove forward, stuck a ball over the bar. You know, at different stages, he's 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 been that kind of go-to guy and um, doesn't get the... And, and this is for me, you know, uh, I suppose I, I, people will say because I'm a former defender or, or midfielder, you know, that. but, uh, you know, the tendencies that the backs and goalkeepers... I know Clug got played the year last year, but the, the headlines always goes to the forwards, do you know what I mean? And I, I think, you know... Uh, James McCarthy, um, you know, uh, he should get a lot more. He should have a few more All Stars, in my opinion, um, than the one he has. But yeah, he doesn't. For me, he doesn't get the recognition that he deserves. You know, and I guarantee you, if you were to ask any of those players, who was the first player, or who would well, I suppose the two players you'd have down on the on the sheet, or who would be your best best player you ever play with, Clucko and, and, and McCarthy would be would be at the top of that pile. You know, um, and that's uh, you know that's a fair saying for. For a lot of those lads, because the lads are sitting on eight all earnings now and, and seven and six, you know. So, but look, come here, he's a uh, he's definitely look, he's definitely up there, one of the best in my opinion, you know. And Johnny, um, before I go back over to John, like Desi Farrell took a huge risk bringing in ten new players to the panel overall, leaving Brian Howard and Paul Mannion on the bench. Like people actually forget the risk he's taken, like. For his first season in charge of the biggest job at the moment in Gaelic football. Yeah, I'm fairness to him, but like you know, Desi would know Brian and, and would know Paul Mannion after managing um on on rage, you know, and I think he had to stamp that authority or have that like he wasn't afraid to drop those lads. And in fairness, you know, the the lads who replaced them, like you know, um, in terms of Paddy Small and um. Who was the other one? Sorry, uh, lost it there. Even though it's Scully, he was keeping him out. Sorry. Well. Who? Bugler came in as well. Oh, Bugler. Sorry, apologies. Bugler. Bugler. And in terms, of, and then Robbie McDade in the wing back, half back, you know, there's, they come in and they play very well. So, like, it's very hard to, you know, uh, not reward lads who weren't going well. And, and, and particularly the two lads, the two four lads, uh, like, you know, um, Bugler and um, Paddy Small, their form in the club championship was very good. Um, Bugler, we played uh, Plunkett's in the in our second group match with Crokes, and he was very good that day against ourselves. And he carried that vein of form in, like into his Dublin uh, uh, campaign, which is great to see. The same with Paddy Small, and I think you know the, if this had been a normal season, those lads wouldn't have figured. I don't think as much as you would have seen probably Mano, Mano and Howard getting it, having a start because you know. Desi wouldn't have seen as much as those lads. And I think that's the beauty of this championship this year. I mentioned it already uh, previous in a, a couple of other podcasts that, um, you know, a lot of managers this year have gone with players who have shown form in the club championship, which is great, you know. And I think I think that's uh, that's been one of the highlights, I feel, of this year is that those players who would normally never probably get that look in have been given that opportunity because of the form they've carried from club and carried it straight into 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 the county, and it's been such a short window, and it's been knockout. Play, like you go on form, do you know what I mean? So whereas there's a gap between you know when you go from from or there's a county where there's they play national league, then you go back to your club, and then you go back to county, and then you go back to your club. So there's no there's not that chance to stake a claim like the way that some of the lads have this year, you know. But um, yeah, look, it's. He's he was very brave and and, and fairness to credit to credit to Desi you know he was he 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 knew he had to come with something different and uh, like for me it was a big gamble like you could say it was the poison chalice but you know those lads he would he got he got the balance right you now look you could say COVID year if it had been a normal year you know I think the, I think actually the lockdown actually suited Dublin just have, look how fresh the lads were you know on Saturday and how and how how you know, uh, everybody covered the ground very well. I think the lockdown actually suited with our lads. That those lads needed a break because they were on they were on the roads, you know, a long time. And I think it came at the right. That, that lockdown came for the betterment of Dublin than anybody else. I feel because a lot of those, particularly those like Conor Callahan, Karen Kenny, like you know, comes playing college football and stuff, and you know, and and and, and hurling as well. So, but yeah, it came at the right time for them, you know. So and John as well, like the state of Dublin had. Nearly all of Ireland was saying, oh no, this is going to be a domination. But you have to give Mayo credit, like Oshie Mullen driving forward there for hand pass. They got it back level, really, within no time. 
Yeah, they did. Like in, in all fairness to them, and they, they did really hold to the guns. But it's just such a pity that, like I said, we made earlier on that you know Keelan O'Connor. I think he was starved of the ball. I think in the second half, and in credit to Mayo, like they did really, you know, they didn't let it slide after, as you say, um, after uh, Dean Rock got the first goal. So they, they really went up the pitch and went ass Dublin, which was great, and they made a game off in the first half, but. Um, look, that, that never said die attitude is a thing with Mayo, but it's just, you know, it just didn't really do it for long enough. And I think, you know, for a lot large parts of that game, I think, I think was it David Brady was saying too many unforced errors, too many balls to drop short, too many wides are kicked. And I keep saying it, you have to be so, so clinical against this Dublin team because they will swallow you up and eat your life. Yeah, and Johnny, John makes a good point there, like, Dropping the ball short into Stephen Cluxton's hands, it's almost like giving away a score. Yeah, absolutely. Look, they're so economical um, and you have to be clinical. Um, and in terms of you know dropping short, it's just giving possession back to them and then they're on the counter-attack. And the way, the double, the way they're at the play, they can slow it down, they can suck you out, they, um, you know, they can go fast. You know, and it's the variation of the game which is which is brilliant, you know, that they can they're able to change it up where they can run it, they can play it quickly uh, through the foot pass, and then they can go into the war boxes as you call them, which is the right and left corners, and they go in deep and then they bring it back out. But then they have runners who come deep who actually like so sort of, um you know, McDade or Paddy or John Small who will come and they'll drive hard into the half forward line and, and try and break that first line of defence of whatever team they play against. And then if they, if they break it then, then they have a fellow to offload it or Dean Rock and they pop it over the bar. So look, they're well, they're well skilled, do you know what I mean? So um, uh, yeah, so look, it's, it, it, it was, uh, it's it's when you're given possession like that to, to, uh, to Dublin, you know, you're only looking for trouble, you know. And Danny, Dublin's second goal, uh, Conor Callan, the bounce alone, how he can just take the Mayo defenders out of it, finish his run and punch it into the net, was just individual brilliance, really. Yeah, it was. Um, I suppose, uh, sorry for late, late being on, and, and congratulations to Johnny for, you know, on another another title for Dublin. So, uh, Arcus is fantastic. I didn't know when. <laughs> it's for Dublin from, a, 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 you know, six in a row. It's just phenomenal. But O'Kellan, I suppose, the funny thing about it, I thought that Ocean Mullen was exceptional at times. And this and this is the thing. I think when you look at, you look at how good Dublin are, if you kneel down Brian Fenton and Kilkenny, which were, were key matchups that we discussed even last week about getting those two guys nailed down, and we all know how good O'Callaghan was. And it's not that he's, he, you know, he hasn't been having the championship that he had a couple of seasons ago, but he was brilliant um, on Saturday evening. You know, the the ability to have that consistency right throughout the game, and and Fenton and Kilkenny come into it really, really well. But most, Oshin Mullen, I thought, was phenomenal on him at certain periods, you know, catching balls out around the middle and stuff. And it's very hard. I think Conal Callan got our team on a match, if I'm not mistaken, didn't yeah. he? And it's very difficult, you know, if anybody looked at isolation and that and said, well, Mullen must have had a good game, which is which is simply not true. I think O'Callaghan just pr- produced moments of brilliance where that bounce to take him away from Mullen, which it needed to be really good. He took out three defenders with a fist pass. You would have a bit of a question mark how that was allowed to happen from a Mayo perspective. And then, you know, Scully provided a lovely, lovely loopy pass for O'Callaghan that, that's it, you know, that punched it to the net. Again, David Clark, if you're being really overcritical, you know, ball goes through his legs for that. You know, if he had a, you know, stopped it with his foot or whatever, you know, again, but again, you're being overcritical maybe, but, you know, it was an exceptional goal and, you know, just even on on the first goal with McCarthy, you know, uh, you know, looking back on it, I'm thinking to myself, did Mayo learn nothing maybe from the Kerry match a couple of seasons ago when directly after half time they lost it, lost a throw in and on on uh, Merchant raced up the field and buried it to the back of the net. You know, it's just this Dublin team. You you cannot relax for one second. If you relax for one second, they will hammer you and there'll be a goal or a couple of points. 
And that's it. That is what differentiates Dublin from other teams. Other teams might be able to, sorry, this Mayo team, not other teams, this Mayo team might be able to live with them for 10 or 15 or even 20, 20 minutes um, and the same with Kerry. But that concentration and uh, that is required for 75, 80 minutes if need be um, is, is needs to be of the highest quality. And you've seen it over the years where the Kingdom at times have come and threatened Dublin's supremacy well have come at times and threatened their supremacy, but they just haven't had that that ability to concentrate for the full 75, 80 minutes and Dublin have punished them, like all great teams do. So listen, the O'Callaghan goal was brilliant, as was as was the run in the first half, but you know what? <laughs> really over critically, how how Mayo defenders, three of them would be, you know, be be taken out and on, on, on one bounce of the ball and then a fist pass. What had happened at the other end? Probably not. So, um, you know, it was just, you know, it was elements of brilliance, yeah, but, you know, you have to be, you have to accept O'Callaghan's brilliance at times and just hold your hands up and say, you know what, fair play, you know, but, uh, yeah, you could definitely say the first goal was definitely avoidable, but the second one, you just kind of hold your hands up on it. And, Danny, just again, um, when Conor O'Callaghan started out, I think it was 2017, the player is booked into naturally. It's it's insane when you actually see a photo from seventeen to now. Yeah, well Johnny will Johnny will tell you as time goes on you tend to, you know, probably bulk out a wee bit and go out for you don't definitely go uh yeah, you definitely go out, you definitely don't go up, which uh is disappointing to many people. But listen, O'Callan's become one of these players now I think he's what is he, twenty seven? Is he twenty seven, twenty six? Twenty three. Twenty three. Do you know, that's a scary thought when you look at it. Um, you know, yeah. these boys are still coming into their prime. James McCarthy is 30 years of age, and if he keeps himself right as an half, three, four seasons, you would like to think. Um, so that, you know, I would see McCarthy and some of these other boys are just going to blow the eight all iron medals that have previously been in place with, with, with Kerry men like Pat Spillan and stuff. Uh, you know, you could probably be talking about 10 or 12 all Ireland medals here. Um, and O'Callaghan, how many he's got? He, he's got three now. I think it's four. 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 Oh, four. He's got four All Ireland medals. Is he? I think, I think, it's, I think it's definitely. I think it's four. Yeah, I think it's um, so, almost yeah, four. Sure. Yeah. The argument, right? He's twenty three. If you finish at thirty two, thirty three, say, you could you could make an argument that he could be sitting yet ten more All Ireland medals. And see, you know, that's what we're looking at here. The, these guys, these guys are. A winning, and when you're going into a winning culture, a winning setup like that from from day day dot, like you know, it's just phenomenal. And it's uh, you know the player that he's become, he's become, uh, you know, a seven eight out of ten player. If he's not getting a nine out of ten every match, then you kind of go on yourself a bit quiet. But you know, if you're producing seven eight out of ten in, in most county games, geez, uh, you know, you'd be very very happy to return. But Listen, that winning, that winning culture, that culture that's ingrained in Dublin is now a very foundation of who who you are. Um, it is, it is, you know, it's uh, it's part of what makes Dublin brilliant. So you know, you, you have to give it to O'Callaghan. He deserves all the plaudits that he gets. And uh, again, that that uh, that uh, Dublin say is just it's just phenomenal. And Dublin, I'm going two points in at the break, John. But I suppose. Robbie McDade, was he a bit hard done by to get the black hair, do you think, before half time? Well, Paul, the hilarious thing about Robbie McDade is, and the frightening thing when he played Cav in that time, I never, ever heard of that man, and he got mad in a match against us. So it just, it's a testament to Dublin, it's a testament to him. Um, was he hard done by? I'm not sure. I think I, I think I was, I, was ta- I was talking to a lot of people, and I think it was probably the correct decision at the time. And look, all Ireland finals for referees are... Uh, our intense occasions, a bit to pieces. So I think it probably was the correct decision because he, like, he probably fully meant what he was doing. And Locus, at the end of the day, did it kill Dublin's momentum in the second half? I don't think so. They probably got better from it. You probably didn't even realise Dublin were down to 14 men, which is frightening. Uh, Mayo, to, I, I don't think even Mayo really used that to their advantage as well. They should have um, because he's a big, big man to go off for then 10 minutes. But um, look at the results. The results um, proved their points. It, 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 it made light work of Mayo still, and they're down to 40 men for what 
10 minutes of the second half. So, no, it, 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 this is a class Dublin team, Paul. And then, halftime subs, Johnny, at halftime. Uh, Mayo lose Paddy Dirk in a massive blow. Brian Howard comes on for Sean Bugler at halftime and he changes the game. Yeah, no, the, the, I have to say the Durkin was a massive loss um, for Mayo. Like he was court tight end, Kilkenny um, in the first half, and you really noticed that in the second half because of uh, Kilkenny's second half performance. Um, so he was a massive loss. So, like, you know, then you're looking, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul when you're trying to, when you have a set out your, your stall and your game plan, and one of your, your main uh, markers to notify one of the opposition's best players gone. Then you're you're shifting around the the deck, and that can that can upset it. And look, then obviously look, Bug or Harold comes on for Bugler, and you know and puts in a big performance. Um, and that's what you're looking for. Um, you know, and I suppose he would have been disappointed in his before, or like, you know, not so not being starting as well. And uh, so probably had a point to prove. I I felt. You know that the Mayo got it wrong in relation when McDay went off. I think that that, that ten minute periods. I think um, you know, like Cluckle came out as an extra player to, to trying to have thirteen on thirteen after field like at times, and you know where you go a man up and you start put bringing a sweeper back. I just couldn't understand it. You know, you have an extra man in, in the middle towards you know push up and go at it. Like, and that's for me where Mayo Mayo I've got got an awful lot right. But that's one thing they got they got wrong. Like, you know, finals are there to be won and they're there to take chances. And, you know, you know, instead of uh, dropping a man back and, and trying to protect or, you know, being a little bit too clever, I felt, you know, they, they, they had an opportunity to push on and they didn't. And I think that's come back to bite them. I think that's where, you know, this cautious side of, of playing of football, I think it's come back to buy a good few teams this year. Um, you know, little Kerry and, and Donegal or, or two, and then that that ten minute period of when you have an extra man and you, and you, and you you drop a man back and you go to sweeper. You know, you know the game is there to be won. You know, so for me, utilize the extra man and, and create the overlap and put Dublin on the back foot like. Instead of you know, and Clucko being the way he is, like he was coming out and just just right, and, and giving and, and like as if it was just thirteen and thirteen again, like so. Look, it was poor enough from that point of view, and, and like you know, you'd expect it to have, but just so goes to show you, you know, uh, James Horan's a good manager, but like on, in the moments, you know, the composure that's needed, you know, um, wasn't there in, in the crucial stages or for that for, for that factor. But look. Obviously, the the, the last third one was massive as well. But look, I still would have I still would have felt that the would have found a way, regardless of them having fifteen on fifteen or you know. But uh, look, it is what it is. But I just felt it was they, they dropped the ball on that one, and I think it's the same old you know scenario. You know, as Danny alluded to for the goal, the first goal that was definitely worked on, and then you know they've those lads have have created those situations so like uh, in training uh, and would have went okay lads we're going to play 14 14 or a man down for the last, for 10 15 minutes they would have would have done role plays game plays creating different situations and you can see that, that that's been worked on particularly when Clucko was coming out and being an extra like an extra outfield player so these are things that that they they tick every box they cover every angle and look it's down to good coaching but also good Good management by the players as well. So, but um, you know, but like they've, they were how they managed it was very good, you know. And Danny, do you think Johnny Cooper got away with a black hair than Aidan O'Shea? Um, listen, the way I look, the way I look, the way I look at that is that that Johnny Cooper is one of these players that just probably is on the line all the time. Um, so. I suppose maybe with times we are, we are, you know, we see things with Johnny that possibly we want to see. Um, and if you start to remove that physical aspect of, 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 um, of our game fr- from, from normal play, then what are we, what are we left with? We see it in soccer. We see it in the games now where VAR and uh, referees are now going over the monitor to check on, on on 50 50 tackles and verbally 50 50 tackles and they, listen it's a hands-on game johnny johnny is just one of those players that is on the 
is on the line all the time. And that's where you want your defenders to be, and to be fair. Now, I suppose Aidan O'Shea is, again, one of these very strong players. So if that was Owen Merchant, for example, he would have got a free, for example, and the opposition might have got penalised. But, you know, Merchant is small by nature and all the rest of it. But Aidan O'Shea just attracts, it's a bit, a bit like flies to shite, he attracts robust play. And people just need to, because he's so strong on the ball, people are nail, throwing themselves in the end to try and dispossess him from the ball. He was dangerous, no doubt, when he went in there. But, yeah, it would have been, it, I, I thought it would have been a soft black. Now, uh, you, you could say that um, in the first half, uh, McDade's black card was kind of soft. It was kind of soft. Uh, Kevin McLaughlin cleverly ran into him. But, you know, in, in my time and, and Johnny's time and stuff, like, you simply wouldn't have got that. that you know, that, that was that was just that was just part of the course and, at that level. So, you know, um, I suppose the bigger the bigger the bigger call in that game would have been Goldrick's inability to see, uh, you know, a clear enough frontal charge on on Lee Keegan when he collected that ball. Now, was was it a it was a bit of dangerous play, maybe. It looked, yes, it looked like it was a, a very, you know, heavy shoulder. But even in real time, it looked like a free. Because Keegan I actually got the ball and was turning on, turning the goal store. So how Golda got that so wrong, I, I, don't, I don't really understand. He never even gave them a free for it. Now, that's a point. That's a big moment. What did it change the game? Fundamentally, I don't think it would have changed the game. There was a lot more issues there at stake. You know, Mayo had kicked six, I think six, um, outfield uh, sh- shots that had dropped short. They had an R three blocked. They'd given away a ball. They re- didn't, you know, didn't she give away a, a, an easy enough free to um, who came uh, Mannion uh, who kicked over a score. A yes, very very sloppy hand that was left in, and, and Mannion kicked it over from the resultant free. So all them things added up, um, and you know um, uh, that meant that that Dublin said so, but. It was, you know, a lot of those things were avoidable from, I would say they were avoidable from a male perspective. Yes, they, even when they went four down or five down, they had opportunities when they were on the ball to be a wee bit more, a wee bit more circumspect and calmer. And they didn't, they decided to take pot shots from stupid angles when, you know, it was quite clear that boys were out in their feet a wee bit. So, um, you know, male, to a certain degree, they showed huge amount of character, huge amount of spirit, and got a lot right. But as Johnny said, you know they got a, you know they got a fair few things wrong. And against this Dublin side, the way they are, their ability, their experience, their skill levels, you just can't do that. You need to have the perfect game, and Dublin need to be off their game to win. And that you know Mayo, Mayo, Mayo weren't perfect, far from it. And and John, it's probably a huge learning curve for the Mayo. Younger players, you could see, a few of them are really struggling with this Dublin machine. Maybe the rest of the country struggled with them as well. But like for Tommy Conroy, Owen McLaughlin, like this is going to be a huge learning curve for these younger players. It absolutely is, Paul. But like, I I'm very much of the opinion, and I don't know what the lads think, but I think if you're good enough, you're old enough. And I think like look like look at Conor Gallagher and look at Paul Manning, look at these young lads Dublin have brought in, and they've been unbelievable and it didn't like they they were 20 and 21 and they were dictating things at Crow Park so realistically it was an ideal chance for them young lads to step up and show show everyone what they're made of so you know Saturday night was a fantastic chance for them and unfortunately they didn't deliver and so you know like Dublin there's no kind of sorry stories to Dublin because them young lads have always produced the goods so why couldn't the Mayo lads produce the goods because you know John John, you're 100% right when you look at Tommy Conroy come on he's having a really good championship really really good championship Tommy Conroy by his standards this year didn't have a good game young guy I will learn from it yes but how often have we said this about young players in Mayo Mayo forward lines you know there has to be a point where you know, Mayo take uh, all their tradition, all the brilliance, all the good things and say, do you know what, today's going to be the day when they do it. And that's how you break records. That's how you break this really bad run that they've had in finals. And Dublin had to do it at one time. Young right. players such as Bernard Brogan, Damer Connolly had to step up at one time and take them through really tight games. And, you know, I, you know, I'm totally in, in, in John's way of thought. 
when it doesn't matter what age you are. You're put on the field there, and you've had good games against other teams. You step up, and finals are there, and and they really bring out the best in any player. And when you look at it, it come back to the same players for Mayo. It came back to Killian O'Connor yeah. still making those those runs and, and being that danger man. And and Kevin McLaughlin lofted a couple of lovely balls into Killian O'Connor at the end of the first half. And there's something that you didn't see. In, like one score from playing the second half for Mayo, you know, yeah. you were looking at bigger consistency there. You know, but yeah, like that's it. But like, it's just the same old story. Like, you're in, oh, yeah, the young lads from AO. It's, I feel sorry for them. And it was a big occasion. Step up, step up, simple as the Dublin lads have consistently stepped up. Like, it may be some Kerry lads, young lads have stepped up. Like, you know, a fantastic, a fantastic oh. chance on Saturday. And it was all in me, oh, the young lads' hands to do it. And they just didn't do it. Like, so yeah. I, I, I can't, you know, I'm not, I'm not really buying into this crack of. Oh yeah, she's geez, too young and short. You learn a curve. Step up. But Step yeah, up. Like, if you're good enough, come on. I agree with you, but the, like the one thing I, I you know, what I read about today, like you know, uh, Aidan O'Shea, he, he hasn't scored one point in an honour and final yet. Oh, Johnny, so, so I great. actually couldn't believe that. Stop yeah. told to say that uh, yeah. on the on the commentary. I, yeah. I actually couldn't believe that stat. Yeah, so like for me, like if you look at over the all our finals, like, like he's like he is one of their go to guys, but for whatever reason, he has yet to produce it in an all Ireland final. Yeah. And for me, when you take that out, when you take someone who was one of your main players and he consistently hasn't, unfortunately, hasn't performed, and like you know, it's probably a bit harsh, but he hasn't performed in the all Ireland final when it's needed. And, but do you, and, do you think, Johnny, that's down to the lack of an actual position that even yeah. she, um hasn't been able? It's not like Conal Callan, where he's centre half, where he was full forward, and now because he's grown into the player and the physique that he has, he's now centre half. Keon Kikani is just a link man, he's fantastic. Brian Fatt is out and out midfielder. I think Aiden O'Shea has been caught between a number of stools for a number of years yeah. where he's going to centre half forward, he's full forward and midfield. And he's in all action. He's 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 a Mickey Murphy where Mickey Murphy was phenomenal at one end and, and he's had to because of different issues. He's had to play in numerous different positions. So it's very, very, I, I do feel, you know, sorry to a certain degree with Aidan O'Shea and he has a, you know, he, he's, I think that he's become a player, a very big player for Mayo without a set position, if you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, I agree with you, Danny. I, I, I think the, but when it comes to Dublin, Dublin, they've put him in full forward on a couple yeah. of occasions already with Dublin and it hasn't worked because Dublin, are, as I said before in the podcast, I think the last one is our previously where, Dublin know their strengths. Dublin might know they might be might not catch a ball above Aidan O'Shea or Clifford or but what they do do is that they either go and break the ball. If you don't break the ball, they allow the forward to win it and then they come down and then they defend. They don't commit themselves and they all they it's a tactic where a high ball goes in, you will see Paddy Small or McDade or filtering back in for the breaking ball that's gonna come off Davy Bourne or Mick Fitz or Philly. And they're swarming underneath it. Clucker will never come off his line. If he does come off his line, he clears everyone out. But if you watch when Clucker comes off the line, there's an automatic two Dublin players will fill the back onto the full back onto the goal line. It's because Clucker was gone. And that's down to coaching. That's down to to knowing your strengths. The lads will identify, you know, and this thing and it's been thrown out over the last ten years. Dublin's Achilles heel is the full back line. And how many times have, have the high balls have gone in? And they've been smart defending. They've gone up and broke it, or they haven't. Con- they haven't contested in the air. They've waited the ball lands, and they swarm. And that's just down to knowing your strengths and good coaching. Just on Danny's point, though, as well, like Aidan O'Shea probably is lost in transition, and he doesn't know where to play. Like when you see Aidan O'Shea tracking back to full back, half back, making tackles, bad tackles at that, and giving away yellow cards and bits and pieces, and letting double kick handy freeze, that's because he actually probably doesn't have a clue where he's playing. The majority of the game because when you see him tracking back and going into the full forward position going midfield it's so pivotal now that Mayo actually for the final few years of that man's career nailed down a position for him because this crack of full back full forward midfield like he, he is a good enough player he just needs to be played in the right position where that right position in that particular Mayo team for Indo is I'm not sure is it centre half forward Danny? 
See, I'm not, I'm not sure. Like the, the oh, lad, yeah. um, the lad at centre half forward that uh, I that actually was playing there, um, what do you call him? He actually kicked two wonderful points. Uh, Ryan O'Donoghue, he he kicked two cracking points, but he gave away a lot of ball too. And this is yeah. a set. Yes, he's young and he learn a lot from it, but you cannot give away a ball. Like Mayo, like even Dublin at times uncharacteristically in the first half give away possess. Like this wasn't. This wasn't a vintage Dublin performance no. when you look at some of the finals that they've won in the past where you've come to really epic battles with Kerry and stuff. This wasn't a vintage, but like when you look at the Fenton Kilkenny played really for 35 minutes and played brilliantly. Uh, John, Johnny will probably have, have more of an in on, on the actual Dublin performance in comparison to what they've done. But this was a performance that, that got the job done more than an absolutely brilliant performance. But it was very important for Desi Farr, for his management. And to be fair to Desi Farr, before when we talked last week, I would love to see when the game's in the melting pot, what his what his management was going to be like. And to be fair to him, Desi Farr passed that, in that you know there was decisions to be made there. Uh, Bulger went off at half time. You know, he put Brian Howard in. Keeping them boys happy, like Mannion, like Hard, people underestimate how difficult a decision that can be when you're pulling them boys off the bench and keeping them happy. Now, the COVID year that we're in, maybe it was easier, but he's got a job on his hands in the next couple of years, keeping those guys happy. And, and you're, you know, you're verbally talking about, you're verbally talking about five players there that you can use that will be all-stars in any other county side. So, you know, it's keeping that dynamic um, happy within the squad. Uh, we can all have brilliant squads, like Man City and all, the, all their riches and all these other sports that have all the riches, but it's keeping the players happy. And Farrell, to be fair, has done that. But he made good decisions along the line on, on Saturday evening. And I suppose from a, if I was in a Dublin perspective, I'd be saying to myself, do you know what? You know, he, 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 he had a good match himself for it. And uh, those are questions that I suppose even Jim Gavin in his first year, he didn't win the All-Ireland. So far, to be fair, has stepped up. And he, and he, and he well, as I said, Johnny will have a bigger insight on that. And Johnny, um, Danny talks there about Desi Farrell's management skills, but like four points, no score in the final quarter was just a difference here. And it was... Uh, comfortable it could have been more than four points up and could have tied down really in that last quarter yeah look they were very smart in how they went about us you know um but you what i felt as i alluded to earlier on like the, dublin looked like they could, could have went down for another 10 minutes and um, they were that well conditioned and, and i alluded to earlier on i think as i said the the that cover break done the world of goods to those lads um and you could see as the championship progressed, the more games they got, the better they got. And in terms of, you know, like this thing about conditioning and everything else, like, you know, the, the strength and conditioning is done over a certain period of time. It's not just rock up and, you, you know, here's a gym program where you're going. Like, their program has been, like, you know, those lads were like the likes of Kilkenny uh, and, and Khan and Mano, they would have come through, you know, um, the underage development squads with Desi. And they would have had a core program at the age of, say, 15, 16. So their core would have been, so their technique and their squatting and all that, and lunging would have been a top drawer. And then the, the weights is added in gradually. So at, at 16, 17, but their technique and how they do things in relation to uh, S&C. And so, they're, so for an injury prevention, uh, obviously, then the strengths. The, so if you look at Dublin, they, you know, and we live with Khan. They don't put on over bulk size, but they, what they do is they they glide across the ground. They can ride a tackle, you know. But it's it's specifically done for the positions that they play, you know. And so, like, you know, I've worked with a, with a good S and C coach, Des Earls, and um, he was with me with Wicklow and, and Kim McCord, and you know, speaking with him, and he's like, you know, the, everything's down, and he can He did his degree and stuff in in, in DCU, and uh, you know, and he said like everything is uh, specified. So the full back line lads and the half back line, like they do a certain amount of running that's required. So short bursts, obviously longer bursts for the half forward midfield. So there's different training uh, in terms of aerobic fitness. So you could see where that, that strength is there, and I just felt. 
you know, of all the teams that like you looked at it, I think Mayo County uh, struggled maybe for the last ten minutes in terms of the condition in relation to uh, where where Dublin were able to keep going. You know, I think that kind of that was a small a small factor at the end, whereas Dublin will look comfortable. Do you know what I mean? And I think you know when you've got guys who you know, but also the subs play a part, and when you've got subs coming in like the likes of Howard and Mannion will give you energy. And the subs that are coming in off from Mayo they weren't going to give weren't giving that energy as well. It's like, oh, who do you, who, where's where's the next person that comes in can give us that energy? But when you've got guys that come in, and I've seen it when I'm playing, I'm sure Danny alluded to John, where you've got a lad that comes in and he's he, he's coming in and he's doing his job, it gives the rest of the team a bit of a lift, and that's what I felt. You know, the last ten minutes, fifteen minutes, what what Mayo needed didn't have that. You know. Yeah, and even on that as well, like, do you think Mayo were kind of dead in their feet the last couple of minutes, Johnny, as well? Because, like, do you think the legs kind of were running, running, uh, running thin on them? Because, like, they, they did run out of ideas fairly quickly and they were taking rash shots, dropping balls short, kicking wide. Like, do you think that was a big factor at the end, Johnny? Yeah, look, I think so. I think, you know, and, like, there's a natural condition in, in, in the lads. And I suppose when you're, when you're looking at the, the younger lads who come in there, like they've done very well all year. And when, when you're looking for kind of, like if you look at it, the lads that come on for Dublin, look, they're, 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 from, they're current are all-stars, if you get me. So like who have a wealth of experience and conditioning and they were coming in, they're finishers. They're not subs, they're called finishers. They're coming in to finish the game. And, and that's the terminology that's used now in relation to they're not seeing the subs, they're coming in, coming in as, as finishers. And the top teams will always want to have their best team on the field finishing. And but Johnny, you, know, you see the finishers, sorry to cut across you. Yeah, right, right. They, do they know their finishers? Uh, you know, how oh, does they, like they if I'm Brian Howard or I'm Paul Mannion and I'm saying to myself, well, do you know how it's those difficult conversations? You know, from a Dublin perspective, we never had that <laughs> real big issue in town. We yeah. had our our best players always played. You know, there was one or two peripheral players then when we were really going well. But you know, you know, how did the how does that? I, I think it's the process. I, if you look at, but if you look at over the years of Dublin being successful, you look at uh, Kev McMenamin as a prime example mm-hmm. of probably the best finisher that uh, uh, like for any game and. His consistency levels off the bench is unbelievable. And I think it's that overall buy-in factor from them as a group. And it's such a tight-knit group is that they all have a role to play. They know that when they're coming in, this is for the team and I'm playing my part for the team. It's not about an ego. It's not about me not starting. You know, and I suppose that's for me is where, you, you know, if when you have that kind of, when you say to a player, look, we're not starting you. But we will. We're going to bring you on for the last 15, 20 minutes. And we want a few to finish the game out. And if you like, and when you have that open relationship, and and look, it all depends on obviously the individual, but and the team itself. But you know, you look at over the years, um, and the, at the impact that those players have had at different stages. You know, um, coming in off the bench and playing a role and fulfilling the role and the impact that that that, that it gives. And you know, and like how many all Ireland finals have we spoken about? Where with this current Dublin and this Dublin era, where the, the the subs have made a difference? Um, you know, and and it's it's continued there. Like and as look, Desi played a blinder, and in the sense of he was he was brave in his selection of the the three lads, Paddy Small, McDade, and, and um, Bugler, and you know, and it's paid off. But like this, this for me, you know, Desi like. Was on a hiding to nothing, five in a row. How was he going to win? Do the six? All the pressure was on him, and and he was brave. And I think that's where you, you look. You, but you want your players to be brave as well. And I think that's where a lot. I, I felt at times with, with Mayo. Yes, they they weren't brave. They weren't brave in that ten minute periods. Yeah, and, and yeah when, that was that was a massive ten minutes that they just they just they, put a sweeper in play and and but instead of put a sweeper to protect her. You know, push on and ask the questions because they they done an awful lot right up until that stage, and that that for me was the defining moment in the match. If they had have pushed up, tied on a few more, uh, tied on more than one score, and tied on a few more scores, it would have put the pressure would have been put on Dublin then to react 
And yeah, and if you remember a couple of years ago, Kerry I think scored a goal when they when when they went the man up in an All Ireland final a couple of years ago. Kerry scored a goal and a point I think, uh, or Young O'Shea got it and and stuff like that. And invariably for those ten minutes after half time were massive, and Dublin brilliantly coming. You know, you talk about masterful outfield play and leadership. Dublin held the ball for a significant amount of those ten minutes. I maybe over half it or. You know, I would like to see the stat on it. Over half that ten minutes, they actually played with the ball in possession. You know, the ball was out at halfway. They were comfortable knocking it back to Cluxon and using him as, as as an outfield player there. So, as as you say, Johnny, that you know Mayo's downfall were was the fact that they never went in the front front foot and were not as aggressive, and probably half time maybe came at a bad time for them with that black card. Um, but they certainly weren't as aggressive in those 10 minutes that you would be hoping a team would be if they're a man up against Dublin. Absolutely. And um, finally on the match, like some key performers all over the field. Um, Dean Rock with 1-4, Conor Gallagher with 1-1, Kilkenny stepping up to play with three points. And then we talk about the impact coming on, but just unbelievable performances for Dublin all over the pitch, John. Ah, oh, yeah, like it's it's Jesus in the nearly bore you talking about Dublin at this stage. Like it just seems to be uh, constant Dublin, Dublin. But look, they're they're, they're a remarkable team, Paul. And you know, every every all the players are after saying there you're after alluding to like Dean Rock. He seldom does something wrong. I was watching them closely against Cavan that time, and I think Brian Fenton kicked one wide, and he just looked like he's after seeing a ghost. Like it, they're perfectionists, and uh, they're everything to do is just so spot on and. It's a credit to them. Um, I'd love to see where they're celebrating at the minute. And uh, is Coppers open on the side, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> um, Johnny, I suppose from being involved in club football, news emerged there at the weekend that it's going to be a regional Alliance League this year, two groups of four, um, North and South League, and no club championship is going to start till July 25th. Do you think that's a major positive for the club? Well, yeah, I think it's positive in the sense that um, you know it's a defined season again. Um, you know, um, but the only thing, the only concern I'd have would be is what's going to happen at the end of the county season for the summer county players. You know, uh, it's summertime; are they going to fly off away? Particularly what the year that's been in it. Um, the first opportunity does some of those lads are going to want to do is, is head away. Like and you, by all accounts, look if things go well with COVID, you know it's going to be very hard to keep player young lads home, and you can hardly blame them with the year that's been had, no traveling, no nothing, you know. And you know, if they're going to throw their lot in, and you know, and uh, with the, with the league and the championship, and then summertime, it's going to be very hard to keep, keep uh, for particularly for for. Counties that might not, uh, you know, are so are in the so-called not stronger counties. It's going to be very hard to keep those players when there's nothing tangible uh, or a carrot to dangle in front of them. So it's which you it's great for the club season that is a defined season. But in terms of clubs losing their best players, I think that's that's the only concern I have is that we will lose because like there's no real break if you get me. Like it's they finish well. It all depends on how far they get knocked out uh, in the season. But you know, if it's finished up in July, you know how many things are going to last in July. Some things might be gone in in June. You know, so uh, and and maybe the end of May. So where are those lads going to go? Are they going to go off for the summer or whatever case it be? So it just it just leaves. That's the only thing I'd be concerned about. Delighted with the with the with the this fine season, which is great, but. Just, just, I feel like that's the only thing I'd be uh, like from, from from that point of view, you know. And you, and you look at the benefit of, particularly as I mentioned already, the benefit of the players that have shown this year, who've shown in their club championship, and were were rewarded by with, 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 with managers, um, you know, giving them their run. And you look at this year, Mayo particularly with, with James with, with Horn. Would he have given those players the run this year if we hadn't have seen them in the club championship? Uh, highly unlikely, you know. But Desi have given the lads, the, the Paddy Small and uh, Bugler, 
that that run or, or McDade that run like McDade is 27 years of age McDade has been playing for Bally Bowden um, the last few years and, and, and is a quality footballer but just in terms of the, the calibre of player that, that, that they have he hasn't had a chance to shine and he has a, he's been, he shown well last year when Bally Bowden won Leinster um, won Dublin Leinster and shot, did well this year even though Bally Bowden a poor year but carried that form in, 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 into championship uh, into county then so that's the only concern I have is that you know those those uh, bright sparks of this summer, um, but that lads will will will. I'm over here. See you later. This COVID thing is doing me head and I'm going off to the, to nice weather and guaranteed nice weather and play a small bit of football in New York or wherever, Boston, wherever the case may be. You know. Yeah, it'd be great if some of the Dublin lads did that, Johnny. Maybe the whole team would be great. Oh, <laughs> 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 stuff. And uh, Danny, I don't know. Did you see any under twenty football final? But uh, Dublin being beaten in the final, so that's positive, anyways. But uh, a terrific win, anyway, um, for Galway um, this weekend, especially as a Galway man, it was, it was good to get a trophy. But I suppose it's superb to the fact that Galway held Kieran Ainger to one point from play, something that we haven't seen in under 20 in the last two years. Yeah, actually, we had a, we had a, we had, there was a down presence, the referee was a down man, and, and, and the Dublin won't. Probably be happy with him. Maybe they thought he was afraid in the end and stuff. But he's listening. He's one of Paul Falloon is one of the most up and coming uh, young referees we would have in the county. And and certainly, you know, I think at senior level, um, he allows play to run. He's very much letting the players play. And if he sees them going into trouble, he would nearly penalise them himself. You know. So, yeah, listen. Uh, yeah, when we're clutching at straws, when we are clutching at straws as a neutral. Uh, and we're looking at uh, how this Dublin dominance, because the ladies, the Dublin ladies actually won as well. And when you're looking at, at um, from a neutral perspective, how do we keep the championship? Um, how do we keep it uh, really, really interesting? Then, of course, wins like, like that uh, in Galway um, give you a bit of a lift, saying that there is... There is a wee bit uh, more talent out there and teams that will come forward and uh, step up to the plate. Um, unfortunately, um, under 20s football and minor football, to a certain degree, uh, it has a, you know, I think you need a series of under 20 and minor players and teams and winning teams to come through before you'll see, see that. Uh, success transgress to a senior team. It's just the way it is. It takes a lot of time at that level, inter county level, uh, senior level is. And, and Johnny was saying McDade is 27 and he's only getting a run now. Like some of these under 20 lads, if they're 19 or 20, it could take them six, seven years to get comfortable in inter county level and to play to the standards that they're expected. So, um, yes, it's it's great, but we've we've seen teams over the years. Um, you know, Calvin, for example, had fantastic underage teams, uh, all Ireland winning teams at minor and under twenty, uh, under twenty one level, and you know this year they finally they finally won and lost the title. So it might take ten or twelve years before that transgresses into a senior side. The bottom line is that Dublin, for me, Dublin just don't look like they're going anywhere. I think that Dublin have taken Gaelic football to a level that. Very, very few other teams can compete with them. Invariably, you would be talking about Kerry, Mayo, obviously, are there, and possibly Galway, and in the north, you probably only Donegal and Tyrone. And Donegal and Tyrone are interesting. Where Tyrone have a phenomenal, Tyrone have a phenomenal volu- voluntary network there that gather money and fundraise and stuff like that that allows them to compete. Donegal seem to have a huge diaspora of people that are abroad in America and Australia and they're sending money back to help the senior team. But again, that they were they were started, I suppose, by Mickey Hart and, and Jimmy McGuinness, and Jimmy has put in a structure there and a re- real culture there that Donegal seem to be competing. But bottom line is that Dublin are so far ahead, even a club level, structurally a club level, and Johnny will be bet- better to ask at that. But some of the clubs in Dublin have invariably better facilities, better coaching, and f- bigger opportunities than a lot of our counties have. And, you know, I think at this stage, it's a, a bit of a broken record. 
I'm not taking anything away from what Dublin have achieved. A phenomenal best best team ever assembled in the history of J, in my opinion. Um, uh, but we really have to look at the funding structures here. Um, we don't have a drafting system in the GAA. We can't swap players about. But what we can do is um, we can look at you know, uh, lifting up the weaker counties, providing them with the funding and the structures and the coaching money that are needed um, to, um, to, to lift the standards at that inter-county level, not just throwing them to a second tier, not just saying, well, that's the way it is, the biggest populations in Dublin. Because Dublin are, uh, you know, they can, they're nearly self-sustained at this stage with a commercial element of it. So, you know, we, you know, I would even go as far as saying that, you know, players within D- Dublin, club players within Dublin, if they have a mother or a father or a great grandpa at the granny room, take it in so that they can up to play in Kildare or Mays and get that taste. Because there are fantastic players in Dublin that probably maybe won't get an opportunity that, real, that, that, that rule is in play Danny because I, I, when I was weight club manager I went after a is few that pa- right? yeah because yeah, I went after a few players that uh, parents um, or, or even granny um, there was a so there, like there's a couple of players I know who are uh, who play club football with Dublin and I think one, one, one with Jules and there's two with uh, uh, Ballantyre um Devros, the Devros. One Devro play was on the Dublin panel for a couple of years and then his brother actually went and played for Wicklow the last two seasons. So there is that rule there where if your parents from a certain county, they can't play. So but it is You look at Johnny, you you'd be familiar. Um, when Mick O'Dwyer took over with Kildare, um, didn't he take his son, um uh Carl? Carl, yeah. Uh, Carl, yeah. Play for four, and wasn't uh, Carl wasn't living in Kildare as far? Oh, he was. He was. He was living in Kildare. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah. So, like, the thing is, if you live in a certain, if you live in a county, and if you got to apply for it, like, there's different fellas. Like, you look, you look at Declan Darcy. Like, he hmm. joined Dublin from and was with Leitrim, but he was born in Dublin, um, but was living in Leitrim for whatever the case may be. So, there is that there. Like, uh, for me, like, you know, there's a lot of things in relation to uh, the funding and everything else, and. And look, yeah, Dublin are, are, could be self-sufficient, um, but in terms of you look at the skill set in relation to Dublin, you know it, they're both they're very comfortable on either either side, and I think that's one thing that was very evident the la- yesterday and over the course of the season, where you're looking at different situations where if they're being tackled on their on say their dominant side, they're more comfortable to go. Out. So if the dominant side is their right side, they're more comfortable to to lead off their left side and pass with their left hand because they're being tackled on their right and look that's down to just uh, good coaching but in terms of I, 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 I get that I'm... Uh, yeah but I know but in terms of the, the fun the fun and like for me I've, I suggested before because I look I, when I was with Wicklow um, I had mentioned I said, like you know different things I, I had mentioned a few times in different interviews I said look we all know where Kerry and Dublin and uh, Mayo are in terms of S&C and condition so so why can't we test the top, the elite, so-called elite, see where they're at, te- then go and test the rest, what uh, and ask them what have you or what people have you put in play for for to get your teams to that level? What's expected? How long does it take? You know, and then give a broader rather than and then obviously then you're looking at uh, funding and everything else. For me, it's very hard to to like. And I, when I got sponsorship in for Wicklow, for it was a three-year sponsor and. Uh, twenty five grand a year for three year, uh, uh, yeah, for three years, and uh, name and rights of Joe of Ockram was Joe Park Ockram. Uh, front of the jersey, back of the jersey was included, and then obviously a few all around tickets thrown in on top of it to sweeten the pot. But you know, but then when you're when you go down to the fine end, it was okay. Uh, you're talking about going to the local paper, which is the Wicklow people, and you're saying, look, can you do me a favour? Can you put us on the back page of your sports page by any chance so that we can guarantee there's exposure to the sponsor? You know, for me, what, you know, if you ask any editor now or, you know, RT or, or, or um, Sky Sports, who are they going to televise? You know, they're not going to televise Wicklow or, or Carlo in the, in the first round of the championship. So, where does it, where, how do you get sponsorship then if they're not getting televised money or you know or can we or I, I suggested before can we not just do 
a Division Four weekend where we play Saturday, Sunday, and you play you televise the games. You do a family deal for for all for for each county to come up to Crow Park for the weekends. When so the Crow Park Hotel is there as well, a family deal for a hundred quid. You get the match, you get food, you get the game, and te- and it's televised. But but some sort of incentive so that you can go to a sponsor say we've got on the this, this date this year we got a live coverage of a match. Be on the television, blah blah blah, you know, something so that will help people generate funding and sponsorship. And whereas, but like when you've got people who are, who are um, reporters working for themselves, they're not going to go out and report on a Wicklow match and go down the country where they can go to a Dublin game or a Galway, wherever case may be. So it's it's a huge factor in my in that in my thinking. It's you know, and I agree. Look, there's something ha- will have to be done. Um, you know, but. For me, there's a lot of there's a lot of questions, and I'm not going to a lot of things where a lot of money is being thrown at different things, and a lot of money, you know, uh, has um, kind of been wasted, um, maybe. Uh, and there's a lot of question marks in different counties. I'm not going to name them where where money has been not accounted for and stuff like that. So whereas, you know, that's where there's a that's a different issue as well. But look. That's I'm not gonna. It's we're not gonna solve it now, but like it's it's an overall thing. But like I do agree with Danny that, that like you know for me, you want or you want to change. You want other teams to be able to win the other end as well. And but like it has to be an overall look at it. At it, it can't be just us down to you know or Dublin. Like Dublin went and learned the model of Tyrone. That's what they went up to Tyrone. You know, and they learned the model of the development squads come back down, and like all our all our development squads, there's former players involved in each of our development squads who have played for Dublin. You know, and that's off their own back. You know what I mean? And there's no money thrown at them to go, on. and that's it's the, with the culture, the values of what it is to be Dublin. So, and I know that's done in other counties as well, but like it's 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 not just one thing; it's an overall thing that has to be looked at. You know. Following on from Danny's point there, I think. Um... It's so important that Galway actually build on that under-20 success because down here in Cavan, we didn't really build on it. I know we're only bearing the fruits of our labour now, but it's so, so important that Galway actually follow up and get players from that under-20 team because there is something building in Galway senior team next year, I think, because we're going to get Comer and Shane Walsh back. So it's vitally, vitally important. And Paul, you know as well as anyone, they is actually build on that success from Saturday, get players from it, and, you know... It alludes back to the point as well. If they are good enough, they will be good enough to play for Galway. And there could be something to brew in Galway if they get them boys on board and buy into a system. They would be mad to play for Port Joyce. So it's just vitally important that Galway can actually follow up from Saturday on to the next year, next couple of what, five, six years? Yeah, there was two lads from the team who were in the senior panel this year, Paul Kelly and Carl Sweeney. He went off injured early, but... Jacqueline is one who's going. We're going to see in the Galway jersey, the captain number four, because he was on the last day. But yeah, there should be players driving on to the senior squad. But um, Johnny, you had a keen interest in the ladies' game, obviously. Uh, one ten. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. I might, mom. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I suppose Dublin made a lot of errors in the first half, but they really resolved them in the second half. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, just, Oh, it, sorry, Danny. Is that for you? Sorry, it? Danny. No, it just come down to the to to the best, best the best team won. Um, and you know they they arrested the things that were going wrong. Um, and they made sure they put them right. So, listen, the best best team won. But Johnny, I suppose, has has more of a vested interest than than me. So, <laughs> I will leave him to to the, on the tactical side of it. You know. I look at it. Um, I felt look, it was it was um. First half, Dublin didn't play as well as he could have. The cork came out, the traps, and and went uh, went hard. I felt um, got the goal early, but I didn't capitalize on it. You know, I felt you know, there was a they, they, they missed, like they missed a fair bit, but also like Dublin missed a bit as well. Like no matter Healy went through and and bottom left corner, she should have she should have stuck it off her own standards. Um, but no more, similar to the lads, I think the the second half, whereas they 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 got a good they got a goal they got a right in the sense of they got a bit more pressure in the midfields um they got some some vital turnovers um look I'm not saying because my my own daughter but she look she 
she had a solid game second half. Like a lot of a lot of girls stood up and played very well, you know. Um, and like you know, when you ha- when they were, I just felt that they were able to get the balance right between their defending and their attack. And I think whereas I felt Cork were, were tried to run the ball too much, and they were. So when they're running the ball too much, like Dublin's defense was so, or defensively were very strong, and every time they tried to run, run the ball, look, Dublin stood up, stood them up, and, and turned them over, and you know they were being exposed in the tackle, um, you know, and that's look that's credited to, to Dublin's conditioning, but um, but like if they had to kick the ball a bit more, they would have got more change. I would have felt out of out of their attack. I felt they just they just played into Dublin's hands and by by running it the whole time and. And like one of Dublin's strengths is is, is like a fairness they they play on the line and they 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 go after the tackle and like Mick Bowen is a, is a very very good coach and was involved with the Dublin team for a year a couple of years as well um and is very much about two 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 uh, two sided players um tackling and uh, and obviously off, offensive as well so I just thought um they did very well the second half and uh, they just did. And they looked. They tagged on a um, couple of scores. I think where where Cork only tagged on one or two scores in the second half. You know, and I think that's where they fell down on it. You know. Um. So I suppose finally, lads. Um. Before we get into the team of the year, um, Danny, we'll start with you. What's been your moment of the year in this year's championship? Uh, well, John, you'll be happy with this. I think Cavan winning the Ulster championship has to be the moment. The moment of the year for a number of reasons, obviously. The year that was in it, uh, what a terrible year this has been. And, you know, hopefully vaccines. But then with this news over the weekend that this that a more contagious element of this uh, coronavirus is, is is probably going to hit us. is is It's just another kick when we didn't need it. But Calvin have been the light at that. Uh, Madden's goal... Uh, you know, when the ball was kicked in long by McKiernan and Madden getting the getting the follow up and burying it to the net, you know, if you're looking at two minutes to go, four points up, you're kind of saying to yourself, you know, it's a, it's a wonderful position to be in in any game, but in the final, um, you know, Calvin could go and enjoy their two minutes there and just get ready to, um, to to celebrate the the big unfortunate for them was. The year that was in it, you know, it probably helped them to a certain degree, but also, um, in a way, it meant that they couldn't celebrate an orthodox win uh, with all the fans pouring onto the on the field, which is a I just I just miss that anyway. I miss that at all Iron final day and stuff like that. I do miss the fact that crowds can't enjoy it and go on and mingle. The scenes that we've seen for a hundred years have, have been brilliant. So, you know, in, in provincial provincial grounds it's still great to see that. Um so Calvin, you know, for me, moment of the year was Martin's goal. Calvin t- totally joyous and, you know, uh, that that for me was was pretty straightforward, you know. I'm guessing yours is Dublin six in a row, John. <laughs> no, it actually isn't. It's not. No, it's not. Um, I actually gone for a Tipperary's win. Um, taught with the the jersey, bloody Sunday, the whole history behind it. I just thought for those lads to contain that emotion, wearing those jerseys uh, on a Munster final day was massive. And I think you know. I would have the best, like the best players in the country, um, you know, would have struggled to be able to try and contain that emotion. And the credit goes to the Tipperary management for for doing that for such a, such an occasion, and and particularly the jersey. Oh, like you know, when they when they said they're going to wear the, the replica jersey, I thought yeah, first must have fine or you know must have fine a chance, you know. When in the replica jersey with the whole history behind that, I thought would it be too much of an emotion or too much nerves and too much kind of pressure on themselves. But you know what? It actually enhanced their 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 belief in, in what they were what they did, and I just thought you know the significance of it. You know, and you know, lucky enough, I, 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 our club was involved with the bloody Sunday when Michael Collins, where it was ourselves and Aero, where where the Dublin and Tipperary. And, the, and the, um, the the replica jersey fell into my bag, so but um yeah. but it was just a, 
at the time I was only 17. I didn't actually didn't really appreciate what it was about. Were you in there? So you were you're a film star. I was in the film But uh, but yeah, it was um, I didn't really appreciate the actual occasion and, and what it was about. But yeah, I just thought that was just such an occasion and and for them to to win it uh, with the jersey. Well, look, for me, it's the standout moment. Like well, you know, uh, bar from the girls winning yesterday, you know so. Oh God. Uh... And John, I presume your moment has to be Callum. Ah, uh, look, absolutely fantastic, Paul. Look at it. it's it's the greatest day I've seen uh, following this Calv team. And Christ, I've seen a lot of dark days over the years. And it's only until my missus was actually saying maybe it was Ray Galligan's kick against Monaghan to beat them. Uh, was that one of the moments of the year on the on the path to success? But no, absolutely fantastic. Uh, Ray Galligan lived in that Sango Cell Cup after twenty two years. Unbelievable, Paul. We'll live long in the memory and I'm just so happy to have done it in my lifetime and uh, it'll be one to tell the grandkids about. Um, my moment um, is actually Mayor Keane's winner um, coming back from Collingwood to not carry out the championship. Um, so that was my moment of the year. But I suppose getting on to the team of the year, um, John, you were picking a one to four. One to four. So uh, I went with, I'm not being biased here, but I think Ray Galligan um, has to be a shoe in this year. I think he was unbelievable for us for the whole Ulster campaign. I think he probably should have got this maybe award probably after kicking the point against Monin. He was just so good. He's been complete, consistently good for Calvin over the years. It's unreal. So I'll give it to Ray Galligan, number one, mind the sticks. Number two, uh, Mick Fitzsimons from Dublin. Uh, very solid for the whole year. He was brilliant again on Saturday. Great man marker. Run through a brick wall for you. Um, he's a fantastic, fantastic player. Great man for mind the house. So Definitely cornerback. Uh, fullback, I think he's not getting enough plaudits. He's a phenomenal year for us. Pork Faulkner, he was unbelievable. Had a great club championship for his club Kings score. was very good for Calvin throughout the whole championship. He was unbelievable. Um, great, great player. And I think he deserves the fullback bears. And number four, Oshin Mullen from Mayo. I think he was brilliant all season. Very quick. Has a great future ahead of him. He's young. I think he'll, he'll, he'll definitely serve Mayo a lot of purpose in the future years. He was brilliant, so I think he uh, he he definitely deserves the number four jersey. Yeah, so I was picking five five seven in the midfield. So Paddy Durkin was the number five. Um, went off injured last day, but up to that was just having an unbelievable championship. Done a good job on Kieran Kilkenny. And um, then six James McCarthy. We talked about him being underrated. Um, he's been phenomenal this year defensively, attacking wise, being superb. And then seven John Small is probably underrated. A lot of counties probably don't like John Small, but it, I'm sure he's a legend within Dublin because he's, he's been underrated. Um, eight, Thomas Galligan. Um, we've seen the Ulster final, his eye. He's just a warrior. He'd stay going all day. And nine had to be Brian Felton. So, Johnny, you were the half forward, I think. Yeah, um, I suppose I went with um, Michael Quimbelin. Um I just felt, you know, he probably had a poor game to his standards in the semi-final, but I just felt the performances in Munster was excellent. Um, and, uh, like, some of his point taken was, was superb. Um, and then, look, I suppose, going off, then, obviously, Kieran Kilkenny um, at 11. Um, he was, look, probably in contention for player of the year um, with his, with his uh, performance this year. Was drifting in and out. But what 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 I liked this year was that I think I think having Desi haven't managed him before and known him since he's a kid. I think Desi I reckon Desi had a lot to play in and and getting him get getting more scores because he has the he ha, he has the uh, the attributes to beat anybody once he puts his mind to it. And I think that I think he he got whereas I felt he was more purposeful in his possession and he was more direct. Whereas, like, he gets on an awful lot of amount of ball, you know, and has been the link man for Dublin for a long time. But, you know, for the amount of ball he gets on, I don't think over previous years to this year, you're not getting enough return on the scoreboard. I think Desi has pushed him to get more on, the, on, on return. And to you know? sorry, Johnny, just I'm going to, you see, he did get a score in the first half and he wasn't, he wanted to take that man on. He didn't want to pass that ball, which is totally unlike because he's a very selfless player. He's, he's, he's totally all for the team. But he took that shot on and he was getting closed down. And I think that's your spot on there when you say that they've worked on him possession-wise to score ratio. 
and he wasn't accepting no for an answer because if you remember he had kicked one wide from a similar enough angle but he'd taken the shot on which was you know totally brave and, and very much in, in line with what you're saying sorry, sorry. no no worries no, no, I think look and that's Desi known known the lads and Mick Alvin who was in the in selector as well with them and Mick would have been involved with those that, that, that crop of players like he, he has Kenny since he's twelve years of age, do you know what I mean? So he, you could see. I definitely would have. I definitely they worked on that. And then I suppose I went with with, with King Khan. You know, um, you know what this young fella has achieved is unbelievable. He's still only twenty three, um, but you know, you listen to the interview after the game yesterday or Saturday, and he, you know, um, just just a class player and performer, and like. The fact of the matter is just a testament to like the it was a great tussle with himself and who was the guy who was marking up can't think of the top of his head. Um Oshi Mullin. Yeah, sorry. Fun, like Oshi Mullin was caught two two balls, three balls in midfields, you know, put him on the back foot, didn't drop the head, kept going, and 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 Daniel Lil said earlier on, like his his bounce to take around players and then for the goal itself, to put the power on the ball was unbelievable and um, for the goal. But um yeah, I think just another contender for player of the year. Um, you know, and 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 those two lads, Kilkenny, and I, I put I put them on the wing because I'm sure Danny will probably have one or two or two lads in there. So I was I I just felt with the two lads this year, how they were able to rotate the different roles within within the team was unbelievable for Dublin and uh, was a huge contributor factor. You know, um, f- for how they won this year. You know, in the inside line. Uh... You were picking it, Danny. Yeah, well, listen, you, you, you could put a, a team full of Dublin players in there and nobody could really argue with it at different points in, in the year, you know. Um, and I think Dublin suffer a wee bit uh, from the fact that the bar is so high now and if there's any drop-off of performance, if it's below a 7 or an 8 out of 10, then that might knock them out of an all-star. But starting, um, you know, in the in the... In the a the theme of fairness, Killian O'Connor. I, I don't. I can't see how you can leave Killian O'Connor out of an all-star team. Do you know when you, <clears throat> not just the four nine that he got in the semi-final, but he was. I thought he was. He had a really good final as well. Um, and I think even from the first match up in Leitrim, he, you know, it was a sticky enough game. Mayo, there was never Mayo were never going to get great plaudits out of. But Killian O'Connor was still went about his business in a really class, professional manner. Um, so Killian O'Connor, I think he's only got one, like for high, you know, he's been one of the leading one, two, three uh, high scores in the championship. Killian O'Connor has only won all star. Did I read that right? He's only won all star. I think, I think that's, that's <laughs> again, an odd statistic that is un, un, unbelievable. But listen, he should pick that up. And I would be surprised if he's not nominated alongside um, Kilkenny for player of the year. Um, uh, and I would think maybe Fenton again. Um, t- uh, at full forward, uh, given the year of the summit, given what was achieved, Connor Sweeney, Tipperary, I think, you know, captain of Tipperary, um, as Johnny said, it, it, you know, one of the moments of the year and how he led and how he the scores that he took, is, you know, sometimes with, with captaincy, it can be quite you know, an iconic role and it's about leadership and it's maybe not about score getting, but Sweeney can back up the score getting in my in my mind and was a major reason why they were they were getting through a number of their matches. And then last but not least, um the the main man for Dublin, uh, Dean Rock. I think Dean Rock has been just so good uh, for a number of years. But again, yesterday won four in the semi final stepping up. Um, um, I'm not sure what he kicked, but he, he kicked a heap of scores in the semi final as well. But just Dean Rock, this this is the big this is the big decision and the big problem when, when you play Dublin is when you put one ha- hand in the or one finger in the dam, something bursts later on. So if you nail down Fenton, you nail down Kilkenny, Rock stats up, same old Callaghan or somebody else like Mannion or Small or Bulger, you know. So it's just it's probably to a certain degree. Dublin suffer a wee bit from the fact that the bar is so high and the interest of fairness, you can't put six Dublin forwards into an all-star team. So, um, <laughs> But I think Killian O'Connor, Connor Sweeney and Dean Rock is my full forward line. Well, 
that's all on our uh, look back in the All Ireland final. Thanks a million to everyone for listening throughout the year. Happy Christmas to everyone. Happy Christmas.